Hi, this is Budget Builds here with Sin. <laughs> and we're uh, we're off to the races today. We're gonna be working on these two barrier builds. Uh, one's a solid barrier uh, for fortification purposes. The other one's uh, a little more, gonna be a little bit more open. We're gonna do a uh, four inch base for each set. Um, we're gonna go up two inches on the side on one of them, and then go across one inch, up one inch then over two inch, then up one inch, and then across one inch for a total width of four and a height of four. Um, I, I think that that'll be a good scale for the figures. Uh, what do you feel like as you as you arrange pieces uh, on the board, what, what diameter do you feel like works best for you as a GM? An inch. About an yeah. inch, yeah. 28 millimeter scale. Yeah, the figures, most of the, uh, your average figures seem, seem to measure about an inch. And, and then as you have your modular pieces, you know, usually your, your 8 to 10 inch pieces uh, in uh, width and length uh, take up a lot of table space. You know, when you're working on a budget and you're, you're trying to find the cheapest way to do things, you have to think very modular. You have to think of the gaming space that you have. Um, like, how do you efficiently use a gaming gaming table space when you when you run a game? How do I? Yeah. Make sure it's cleared off of all character sheets and books. <laughs> so you feel like the that players take up the the most space on the on the gaming table? Yeah, it can happen quickly. Yeah, that kind of it reminds me of a few people we game with. You know they. You know, taking notes is a good thing, right, when you're gaming, but... It's a must. Yeah, but you have to be considerate of the space that you take up. And so we got um, we got our two sections cut out. One is an arch arch piece, you know, starting out two inches in height and ending out in the two inches in, in width and going up one inch on each section for, again, the total length of the piece being four inches and the height of the piece being four inches. And we're beginning to cut out the base. Um, I did think the marker was going to come through the paint, but it just went through the primer. The paint covered it pretty good. Good, good. So don't be afraid to mark your pieces. Uh, you can paint paint over that marker, even if it shows through on the primer a little bit. We, what we're doing for the uh, base, we cut out four four sections of a little thicker cardboard. It's just like a uh, like shipping box cardboard or just that, that thicker corrugated cardboard. We cut it out four by four. And now we're going to start to super glue our uh, two wall sections on. And it's really hard to to hold one piece in place while you try to glue two. Uh, I got lucky on this one. It, it, it wanted it to stand up on its own, so I was able to bring the second second wall piece in pretty easily. Where did you leave that little creased area? Uh, you talking about at the top? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking like it was some kind of rampartment, right? Like some kind of fortifi fortified area to like sit your weapon on whether it was uh, a archer with his bow or i mean not necessarily an archer but uh, uh somebody well working with a crossbow or you know any heavy weapon users uh when we're playing warhammer can easily like perch their weapon on top okay you know some of the it'll look better with some of the figures that set out their weapons along because we unless you use the scrap pieces yeah so this is what i was showing you earlier after you cut out all your pieces you, you just, all the little intersections that you have in between your pieces, just cut those out and keep them. Those are going to be your bits. They're usually, you know, are going to be around an inch. You can whittle them down. You can reshape them. You know, if you want to use them as platforms. This one, I wanted to make it like the, the brick or whatever it was going to be made of was broke away. How you color this in the end wasn't brick, but it still worked out because it was colored like metal, right? Yeah. And so that's something you can look painted for. Painted metal, yeah. Roasted painted metal. Although that shiny part, um, anything that was shiny, it had a different texture when painting it. And you had to put uh, a couple coats more than the other, the other side. Do you feel like I should have hit that with some more primer than I did? Um, um, not really, because um, when you start scratching it, it makes it easy to scratch uh, into it to create like a worn rust look. <laughs> That's a uh, that's pretty cool. That's something you'll get to see in the upcoming paint video that'll be coming out soon. Uh, but th what we have here is I'm taking and I'm building a step and a staircase up to the top, and uh, I'm trying to give. Which is cool because you can fit many figures, in, in into that building, 
Yeah. Because of the staircase or the steps. And they have they have protection from above. And when I was cutting out, this is why I did the one inch, one inch on this one and not the other one is because I, I kind of figured I was going to have some kind of staircase here. And this is where I started taking some of the triangle shaped bits, the square shaped bits and making more fortification. So like what, who would have a stair or who would go up a stair where you're not in any way covered at all. So I, so I started putting some pieces there like that. Uh, to stand out, whatever I had, I, I, I kind of more liked the triangle look, how it was coming across on this, so that's what I, I kind of stuck with, and then centered with a square piece to kind of, I don't know, I didn't know how you wanted to paint it, but I felt like it balanced, it gave it a balanced look with the shapes I was using. Yeah, it did, and <clears throat> I was a little concerned about the a patchwork type of feel to it, but it actually turned out for the best, it looks really, really good. Like something that someone would just, okay, I've got this scrap piece, I'm going to create this barrier. Well, see, this is the second time I'm running through this build. Um, I'd lost video on the first time I went through, so this is the second time. And we'd already had a, a ruinous cityscape for this set of stru structures, along with the bunker that you'll be seeing uh, in a later video. Uh, so I figured, you know, we needed something desert. Is that desertous? You know, we have that new box, we have that new mat. So I thought, you know, let me give it something that can give it uh, the color that it needs or maybe the patchwork it needs to look like it was some kind of desert escape material maybe orcs maybe scavenged yeah exactly and so here I am again this is with the arch pieces now starting off on the same same size base and those were a little bit harder to go and uh, set up I what I when I figured was probably the best was to glue one piece down and hold the tip and have the other one other one ready and then just glue the two together at the point and then work the last bottom down. And you started getting creative with your cuts too. And it kind of worked out for the paint job. Yeah, I just really, I don't know. I just wanted it to have some character with, with each four, not just being, you know, a set of cardboard stair, stairs, right? Because this is a cheap build. Oh, and I noticed it was leaning forward when I glued it. And it was already set. I didn't want to take it off. And so what I did is I took a skewer. We have a few of these lying around, and I cut it at the about the distance I needed. I made sure it was a little on the long side so that when I glued it, it pushed the structure up. And so I, I set it into place, and I get ready with the hot glue gun, and I just settle it in there, make sure it was wedged real nice, and then the structure like stood pretty much. It still has a slight lean to it, but it looks like, you know, because things have broken away, it's leaning forward a little bit. Yeah. But this, this, the structure is still Does very... Does it have safe. to be perfect? I had to learn that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we That's, had a discussion about it. Some of the most stress, especially when it comes to painting, right? Which, when you get down to the detail, is stressing the small details. And it, when you're doing terrain, you start to really worry about what you're doing. But you're doing smaller structures like this, four inches by four inches... And the height of the structure is only four inches. That's not a lot of space to try to throw a lot of things into. So don't be afraid to just kind of put what you need in there and just work with it. Uh, you know, you can always add later. Yeah, exactly. Just put back on top, give it a little another coat of prime in that spot that you added to if you've already primed. And just, you know, make the most of what you have. Maybe, you know, you need something in the back end where it's a little clear because you put so much on the front side. Maybe you need to balance the look out. And that's what I felt like I had going on. And so I started to set this table here, or or a step, you know. I really didn't know what it was from. Maybe it was a remnant from how you used to get up to the top of this structure. And that's that's all that remained. Uh, this, is, this is what it came out to look like at the end. And I just, you know, want to thank you guys for checking in. You want to see more content like this? Uh, like, subscribe, comment down below just to interact with us. We'll, we'll get in touch with you. And uh, we just want to have, if you want to participate in the projects that we're doing or give ideas, there's also also a cash, cash tag down below you can check out. And just keep in tune. And thank you. And have a nice day. See ya.